Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Hope you all are fantastic. In this video, we are going to discuss about Dynatrix interview questions. If you are visiting our channel for the first time, kindly subscribe to it and also share with your friends. So without wasting the time, let's start. The very first question we may expect from the interviewer is, what is Dynatrix and what is it used for? Answer should be, Dynatrix is a full stack observability platform used for monitoring the infrastructures applications, user experience and more using the AI and automations. Earlier there was a time where we were using the different tools for the different monitoring. For example, we were using the infra one monitoring tool and for the application another monitoring tool and for the you know databases one more monitoring tool like that we were using the different tools earlier but with the help of Dynatrace we can club all together we can monitor each and everything. We can monitor infrastructure, applications, user experience and many more. Okay. That is what Dynatrace is very much growing nowadays also. Okay. Next question. What is one agent in Dynatrace? This is very much important and every interviewer will ask this question 100%. What is Dynatrace one agent? Okay. Answer is one agent is the core component installed on the host that automatically discovers all the processes, services and dependencies. Okay, whatever the data you might be seeing in the Dynatrace console, that data will come from the Dynatrace one agent which is installed on the host. Consider this is our host server, here our Dynatrace console. So if you install the Dynatrace one agent on this machine, Dynatrace one agent on this machine, then it will collect all the logs, metrics, okay, traces, events, each and everything and send that information to the Dynatrace console. Okay, this is our Dynatrace console. Inside the Dynatrace console, we can build the uh, you know, beautiful dashboard with the help of this data or we can create the problem notification, whatever we want. Okay, please remember this particular answer. One agent is a core component installed on the host. Automatically, it will discover all these things. Okay, next question. What is Smartscape? What is Smartscape? Answer is, it is a real-time topology map showing dependencies between the services processes and infrastructures so with the help of smartscape we can clearly understand the complete infrastructure for example it is going to give the result as this is our data center on top of data center what all are the hosts are available on top of that what all are the services are available on top of that what all are the processes are available like that it is going to give the complete interconnection between each and every object in the graphical view so that it is easy to understand the entire infrastructure and also easy to troubleshoot the issues okay easy to troubleshoot the issues if there is any issue in any one of the host so that it will give the color indications like uh, uh, red color so that we can directly go into that host click on that it will directly take into host view page where it will clearly tell the information what exactly wrong with that host how we have achieved so with the help of smartscape so it is very much helpful when you are doing the troubleshooting okay so that is what they are mentioning here it is a real-time topology map showing the dependencies between the services processes and infrastructure and you are able to see the screenshot also on my screen how it will give the result next question what is active gate and what are the types of active gates okay answer is active gate is a proxy that facilitates secure communication between the one agent and the Dynatrace. Okay, what are the different types of active gates are available? Environment active gate, cluster active gate, synthetic active gate and Kubernetes active gate. Consider you have a hundred servers here. Okay, you want to monitor all of those servers. To reduce the traffic, what you can do? You can install one active gate in between the host and the Dynatrace and send all the data to the this particular active gate and then active gate will send the data to Dynatrace so that you can reduce the traffic. So this is very much important feature of the active gate. And another one is if you want to do any synthetic monitoring from the private locations, if you are not installed this particular synthetic enabled active gate, then you can't do that. Okay, you have to install this particular synthetic active gate, then only you can monitor the synthetics using your exact location. So very much important. So these are the different types and each are having the different importance. 
नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन डिफरेंस बिटवीन द रियल यूजर मॉनिटरिंग एंड सिंथेटिक मॉनिटरिंग ओके वी शुड बी वेरी केयरफुल व्हाट एग्जैक्टली दीज टू थिंग्स आर रम रम इज नथिंग बट रियल यूजर मॉनिटरिंग शॉर्ट फॉर्म इज रम रम कैप्चर्स द डेटा फ्रॉम द एक्चुअल यूजर्स इंटरेक्शन सिंथेटिक मॉनिटरिंग यूजेस द स्क्रिप्ट टू सिमुलेट यूजर इंटरेक्शन फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ यू वॉन्ट टू डू द रम मॉनिटरिंग दैट इज नथिंग बट अ रियल यूजर कनेक्टेड टू एनी ऑफ यूर अप्लीकेशन दैट इन्फॉर्मेशन इट विल कैप्चर Consider it is your application डब्ल्यू डब्ल्यू डॉट गूगल डॉट कॉम ओके इफ सम वन कनेक्टेड टू दिस पर्टिक्युलर अप्लीकेशन फॉर एग्जाम्पल आई एम लॉगिंग इन टू दिस अप्लीकेशन ओके देन वॉट एवर द थिंग्स आई डू दैट इन्फॉर्मेशन डायनेटेज विल कैप्चर ओके आई एम द रियल यूजर आई एम गोइंग टू एंटर माई रिक्वेस्ट देयर लाइक आई वॉन्ट टू सी डायनेटेज वीडियोज आई वॉन्ट टू लर्न द डायनेटेज कॉन्सेप्ट वॉट एवर आई एंटर इन डब्ल्यू डब्ल्यू डॉट गूगल डॉट कॉम दैट इन्फॉर्मेशन इट इज गोइंग टू कैप्चर इन द Data trace. This is real user monitoring. Suppose if you want to know the status of you know particular application or a URL, so then you can take use of uh, synthetic monitoring also. For example, a a person cannot log into you know applications all twenty four bar seven, right? It is not possible a person to sit and check the availability of the application. So in such cases, what we can do, we can enable this synthetic monitoring. so with the help of script it is going to check the availability of the application as per the given regular uh, given intervals for example if i give 5 minutes time interval so what it will do for example dana trace it will check the availability of that particular application every 5 minutes and it will collect the data how much time it is taking to load is there is there any errors from which location it is connecting okay all this information it will capture so this is the main difference between the ram and synthetic synthetic will do 20 bore bar 7 work you can say it is going to capture the data 20 bore bar 7 as per the time interval but in case of ram if any user connected to your application that information we are going to monitor in the data trace okay that is what they are also mentioning here it is going to capture the actual user interactions but in case of synthetic using the script we can simulate the user interaction like go to www.google.com then search something in that then go to the next page then click on submit button whatever we do right all these steps will be captured in the data trace and it will follow the same steps each and each and every time if there are any errors if there is like how much time it is taking to load all those things we can capture in the synthetic monitoring okay next what is problem in data trace okay there is a problem concept of problem notification so they are asking what is it what is problems in the data trace answer is it is a summary of detected problems including the impacted services root causes and timeline of the issue for example if you set a problem detection for cpu uses okay you want to monitor the cpu uses on all the host and you have set the threshold as 90% if the threshold is cross 90% on xyz server then it will immediately trigger an alert that we call it as a problem notification in the problem notification it is going to give the exact timelines when the alert got triggered and what is the root cause for that which service is using more time by using the ai concept it is going to give the clear information to us so this is the importance of problems not only for the cpu uses whatever the problem notification you might set in the data trace it is going to work in the same manner okay so we are going to define some uh, three shots right if it is violating there is anomaly detection then it will detect that information and it will create the problems for us then we can connect or we can send that problems to the different you know ticketing tools like wizard duty or service now for the investigation purpose next question how does data trace auto discover the services okay this is very important and simple also the auto discovery works based on the one agent as soon as you install the data trace one agent on your host so it will start collecting all those information consider this is our host and here we have installed the one agent as soon as you install the one agent on the host it start collecting all the informations like what all are the applications were available what are the services what are the processes what is what is the current situation of those like what is the current memory usage cpu usage all those things it is going to capture right as as i mentioned already this information so i'm just repeating one more time the auto discovery works based on the one agent as soon as you install the one agent it is going to detect all these things services technologies frameworks 
and dependencies. This is a one of the important feature of the Dynatrace. But in case of other APM tools, if you consider, for example, App Dynamics, that is AppD or Datadog, you are going to use the different different agents for different different monitoring. For example, if you want to do the host monitoring, right, there is a different agent for that. If you want to do the application monitoring, there is a different agent. If you want to do the database monitoring, there is a different agent for that. But Dynatrace overcome all those things. It is using only one, that is one agent. If you install one agent, it is going to do all the activity. Host, application, database, network, each and everything, right? That is a, one of the greatest feature or importance of our Dynatrace. Okay, just remember this point as well. Next, explain the Dynatrace tagging strategies. Tags play in a very important role in Dynatrace that we have to be very careful. It is used to organize and filter the components. They can be automatic, manual and rule based. There are three methods for creating the tags. One is automatic and another one is manual and third one is rule based. Okay. So these tags we can take use, you know, at the time of, you know, enabling the maintenance mode or creating the problems or inside the management zones. These are, uh, you know, these tags play a very important role in those things. For example, if you want to enable the maintenance mode, wherever tag that is environment equals to prod is there, you want to enable the maintenance mode that is suppressing of the alert for those only. How you can do? You can just go to the maintenance mode and there you can provide the criteria. Wherever tag that is environment equal to prod is there, just apply to that. So this is how you can take use of the tags, not only for the maintenance, even for the management zone or even for the problems, it plays in a very important role for you guys. Then this is very important. What is Monaco in Dynatrace? What is Monaco in Dynatrace? It is one of the important application given by the Dynatrace itself. If you are not interested in the Monaco, you can go for the Terraform for the automation purpose. Okay. Hope this is understood, right? The main importance of Monaco or Terraform is automation. If you want to do some automation, for example, in your environment, there are 1000 servers. Okay. In that 500 belongs to SQL and 500 belongs to Citrix server. Okay. And you have created a one host group for this one and one host group for this one. Now there is one requirement comes and they will say like wherever there is SQL server, this 500 servers were there in that I want to add one particular tag that is environment equal to prod again. I want to add this particular tag wherever SQL servers are there and wherever Citrix servers are there, I want to add the, you know, a tag like environment equal to UAT. So just for understanding purpose, I'm saying, so how we will do, it is really difficult to log in all 500 servers and to do the tagging of that one. Okay. Just giving an example, but with the help of this Monaco, you can do in a few clicks only. So it is clearly mentioning the information here. You can see, right? Monaco allows the configurations using the AML and JSON files through the Dynatrace configuration API. Through the Dynatrace configuration API. There are two files. One is AML, another one is JSON. So in those two files, we need to give the complete details on which environment we are going to perform the activity. And then what we are going to do, like adding the tags or, you know, or deleting the tags or creating the synthetic monitors, whatever you do in the GUI, right? That is graphical user interface or on the console, each and everything you can do. It is possible to do with the help of Monaco. So with the help of code, we are doing monitoring as a code instead of the console. We are using the code to configure, to edit or to modify whatever you say. Okay. Total the view or the answer for the Monaco uh, in the Dynatrace is it is mainly used for the configuration purpose using the AML and the JSON file. Next, how do you create the custom alerting rules? Answer is using the alerting profiles. There is one section called alerting profiles. In that, you can go to the alerting profiles and se select the uh, proper severity, tags and event types and assign the notification channel. So based on that, it will create the alert rule for you. Then what is Monaco? I already explained this one. Then comes what is management zone. Very important. 
I will put a star mark for this question. What is management zone? Answer is a scoped view of the environment useful for the access control and separation of the teams or the units. Okay, so your answer is a scoped view of the environment. Okay, let me explain what exactly meaning of you know, scoped view of the environment. For example, you have a SQL team. Okay, there are 10 members and you have a Citrix team. Okay, there are 15 members. And of course, uh, you have one more development team. And in that there are 30 members. Okay, everyone use the Dynatrace for their own purpose. But SQL team no need to view the alerts or the configuration whatever we set it for the Citrix or the development. In other way, development team no need to see the data set it for the SQL or for the Citrix. So it may create the, some confusions or from some security purpose. We no need to see the data for all the team that all the data. So in such case, what we can do, we can create these management zones. And in management zones, we can provide that criteria. So I'll create one management zone called SQL management zone in such a way that that team that whatever the 10 members are there, right, they are able to see only SQL data in the Dynatrace console. They will not able to see the development related data or the Citrix related data. Likewise, I'll create one more management zone for the Citrix team. OK, I will add all the members, all those configurations so that they will able to see only the Citrix data. They are not able to see any other things related to development team or the SQL team. So that what we have achieved here, we have scoped the view of the environments, which is useful for the access control and separation of the teams. So SQL team, they will not come to know what exactly happening with the Citrix team in the Dynatrace. So that this is how we can achieve with the help of management zones. Then what is the purpose of Dynatrace API? Okay. It is used to automate the tasks like configurations, management, fetching matrix and posting the events. For example, if you want to see the complete list of problems generated in last seven days, how we can do, you can take use of the Dynatrace API and execute that it is going to give the complete list for you. Suppose if you want to see what are the synthetic monitoring set for you. Okay, with the help of API, that is also possible. So overall, to automate the task for example i want to create a new synthetic monitor by using the api i don't go into the console and uh, follow the steps like go to the uh, settings all those things i want to use the api i want to create it for example i want to create 100 synthetic monitors instead of doing the manual task we can take use of the api and we can execute only once so that it will create 100 synthetic monitors for you in a just a single few clicks so it will reduce the human effort here so that we can do a lot of automation using the Dynatrace API, not only for the synthetic. Of course, you can create the RAM using the API. You can create the host group. You, you can collect all the problems were generated. You can create the tags. So many things we can do with the help of Dynatrace APIs. OK, so these are the few important questions that you may expect during the Dynatrace interview. Hope the session is useful for you guys. Thank you so much for watching till the end. Bye for now.